I had the good fortune of running into Tim Rajeff here out on the Deschutes today and thought I'd give him a cool opportunity to uh, talk about what's coming up in 2020 with uh, uh, Echo Fly Rods and Ray Jeff Sports. So, Tim, what do you got for Well, us? Tim, thanks for inviting me to chat at you. Trout Spay is a huge deal. What's your best Trout Spay? So, two years ago, we said, you know, Spay's gotten confusion, confusing. Like, what's a switch rod? What yeah. was invented, you know, Miser popularized them in Southern Oregon to be used as single-handed or two-hand. You could switch back and forth. Right. Do you ever use a switch rod with one hand? No. Probably I... not, right. We make a one-handed spay rod, specifically 10 foot 4 inches. So switch rods really are small two-handers. And when you have a 10 and a half to 11 foot two-hander throwing four, five, six hundred grains in that typical steelhead range, they, they tend to be a little short. So last year we came out with three new spay rods. A full spay, which is 13 footers, six, seven, eight. Then a compact spay, 12 feet. Okay. So it's like a stretch switch right. rod. So it's a true two-hander. Right. And then a trout spay, all 11 feet, a two, three, and a four weight. So the trout spay world is divided in between guys that are maybe going to maybe F around a little bit with spay, but they don't know how much. So in that shorter length, um, you can literally, and you've done it if you've trout spayed, you can you can overhead cast it, yeah. you know? And so that's our top of the line. So we've made it easy. Trout spay, compact spay, and full spay. And those are our higher performance sticks. Okay. So you can get into it. So what's the what's the crown jewel? What's the sweetheart? If you had a favorite. Well, you I one I was using one the other day. Kath and I are lucky enough to get to travel, and in Argentina, I was using the 11 foot three weight okay. for the trout spin. Okay. Yeah, and then for me, the 13 foot rods for steelhead, if I think are a little bit clumsy considering our heads. Spay lines have gotten shorter, right. so my favorite stick is my compact spay. It's a 12 foot seven weight, okay. and that shorter length, a little bit lighter tip. So, oh my goodness, you know, you don't even feel like there's a fly rod in your hand when you use that. Right yeah, now, will cool. you throw a, an airflow rage on that? What kind of line do you prefer? Yeah, I mean, I like stay near the surface but of course if you're dredging so the rage on that uh, um, seven weight is still not too long it still functions really well and then the difference is uh, if you're throwing a skagit um, on that stick if I'm tied up against the bank and I don't want to work so hard I'll use the scout head those okay. are those slightly shorter yep. heads and if not we do have a new driver series Tom Larimer kind of stepped back and we fine-tuned skagit heads so instead of skagit g3 generation 3 we call it the driver and it's a little bit lower density. Okay. Excuse me, a uh, little higher density, so it doesn't float as high. Okay. So when you set up on shorter heads and you sweep, you want a little more stick than the old days. Right. So what happens there is like, um, imagine spay casting on a gravel, uh, on a concrete parking lot. When you go to sweep, you don't feel any load, any right. stick. Right. You feel it right at the end. Right. And for rods that are a little bit shorter, they come around quicker and you lose the sensation of load. Okay. The old days of a Deck Hogan, a slower or a Skagit 13 footer, you can you can really feel it load, it helps you with your timing. Right. So to compensate for the fact that people are fishing slightly stiffer, faster rods and their sweep is faster, we wanted a little more stick, okay. have that head sit down a little more. So when you set up and sweep, you start to feel the rod, that you feel a little more stick which loads the rod a little bit and that starts to help you with your timing so that's the new series of lines called the driver, the driver. Now and they, that... re they replace the g2 okay. the skagit generation the, 2. so the driver is a skagit it's the head is it so you say it's more is it because it's the what it's made out of or they is just it intermediate they just no it's not intermediate it's just a little there's a few there's just slightly fewer air bubbles because i know the uh like Rio uses PVC and you guys use poly polyurethane. Polyurethane, right? And so that that it's it uh, inherently uh, PVC is made from a, a single plastic that then they add softeners. Okay. Or to, like that's that new car smell. They're called plasticizers. Right. They keep it flexible. Polyurethane starts out as a pellet, and you can get it as soft as a gummy bear or like a, as hard as a rock. Okay. So the idea is that they don't have to chemically change the plastic to make it more supple. Okay. So with airflow, if we know you're going to be fishing 45 degree water, then we use a softer plastic. Okay. And then when they extrude it, it squirts out of this machine. At that point, you decide you want it to float like a cork. They add a bunch more foaming agent. Okay. Then it's like a, you know, 
you know, like your Crocs, you know, super foamy, or do we add less, less, and less until it's an intermediate? Uh, okay. A pure pellet of polyurethane is an intermediate. Is and then right? they add bubbles to make okay. it, they add a, a foaming agent to make it buoyant. Uh, PVC starts as a plastic, just like PVC pipe, and then they add micro balloons. And then the more you balloons you add, the fluffier the line gets. It changes the property of the plastic. And that's why in a lot of cases, airflow really is a, a superior line for uh, like making two-handed lines. Also right. the loops are, uh, airflow loops, we can weld that material better than PVC. Yeah. So polyurethane is what your dashboard's made out of on your car. And okay. So it's it's been around for, about 25 years and so it's a difficult material to work with that's why you don't see any of the other guys doing it and airflow yeah. had patented a long time oh, ago oh is that right yep because well when you guys are done with it i know if i want to weld it a cigarette lighter and a little piece of that uh, yeah heat shrink tape is just yep. so yep. easy you know because i like chopping them and yep all that stuff you're an official line geek right oh i'm terrible it was a real honor to spend some time with such a gracious and accomplished fly fishing legend. Well, thanks, Tim, for your time. Thanks, you guys. Check out his site. Thank Please. you, guys. Thank you, buddy.